tomatoes, 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 tomatoes. Yep. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to habits specifically habits that I've picked up since moving to America. And just to clear up any confusion, this is not a video about how I ran away to a convent and became a nun. That's a separate video. No, this is a video about little things that I do habitually every day that I didn't do when I lived in Britain. And because a long-standing habit of Uncle Toby is to hammer away on his keyboard right after my videos, I want to preempt him by insisting that this video does not include habits like leaving socks around the house, because quite frankly, I've done that my entire life. Plus, that's universal, and I know that because men do it throughout the entire universe. The entries in this video were heavily inspired by American culture. And so with that in mind, here are five unshakable habits I picked up after moving to America. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. When I lived in Britain, I never once drunk a cup of coffee, except for when I was one and a half years old, and that was bad for everybody, especially my parents. Now, I don't want to get carried away and suggest that we don't have coffee in Britain. We do. It's just that when I lived there, there were two factors at play. Number one, tea was more popular. And number two, per capita, Americans drink way more coffee than the British. It should be noted, of course, that the United States is by no means top of worldwide coffee consumption. After all, people in Nordic countries drink three times as much, which frankly is absurd. Nonetheless, even though coffee consumption has actually increased in Britain since I left, presumably because people need it as a coping mechanism, Coffee is still more prevalent in the United States. And I really started drinking coffee because all of my work colleagues were doing it. And I didn't want to feel left out. Before I knew it, I couldn't stop. And that might sound to you like an addiction as opposed to a habit. But here's where the habitual nature of coffee drinking comes in. I've made it a habit to drink coffee as soon as I wake up. And I need that just to compete with my cat because when I wake up at 5 a.m., usually in zombie-like fashion, I'm always struck by how he's up and about like it's nothing. Here I am accidentally pouring coffee into my cereal and he's already had breakfast, cleaned himself three times and fought off an imaginary mouse. But coffee isn't the only thing I picked up in the workplace. Like any other country in the world, America has languages within languages. And one of those languages is corporate speak. And arguably, no country on earth is more fluent in this language than the United States itself. Oh, sorry about that. Looks like I accidentally muted myself. What I was saying is, can you hear me? What I was saying is, I got another email today from Martin saying, we need to touch base about those SOWs. And I still don't know what an SOW is. T to me, an SOW is a female pig. And as somebody who worked in American office environments for the better part of seven years, I've picked up this lingo through osmosis. So you'll hear these phrases that you'll never hear outside of the office environment, such as, can we circle back? Let's touch base. Can we get our ducks in a row? You know, unless you work for a veterinary service or the parks department, you're not going to be doing anything with ducks, much less getting them in a row. I know this is just an idiom, but at the end of the day, ducks are just going to do their own thing. So it's better for your productivity if you leave them alone. Same goes for CBT, because I know now that it stands for computer-based training, but previously it meant cognitive behavioral therapy. So we just need to spell things out. To those of you who've never lived with a cat, I feel both deeply sorry and envious. But if that is you, there's probably one thing you don't know about indoor cats. They're constantly trying to escape. Why do you always do this when I have to go down and get the mail? What, you did? Get off my hand. He's trying to turn my hand so that the hand turns the doorknob. He's, he's so smart. In America, they're much less likely to be successful because on the whole, Americans prefer to keep their cats indoors. In Britain, sometimes it feels like there are more cats on the street than dog feces. All that to say, when I moved to the United States, I thought nothing of letting the cat out of the flap. But then I saw something weird 
I watched as a cat got run over by a truck and it just happened that behind that truck was a police officer and he stopped his car, got out of it, saw me and my wife frozen in horror like this and he just picked the cat up by the tail and dumped it by the side of the road. And in that moment, I had an epiphany. If one of my cats got flattened by a truck, I wouldn't want them to have such a demeaning burial or to be flattened by a truck. I mean, let's be clear. And so now every time I leave the house, I have to make sure the cats aren't following me. They're indoor cats. They're not going anywhere. They're staying put. There's actually just the one cat these days. The other one died of kidney failure, not a Prius. You'll be kidnapped by cyclists. Do you want that? Oh, he's, he's got out, he got out. I, I didn't mean for that to happen. Come back in. When I lived in Britain, I had a habit of forming communication with other people in a way that didn't put them out. So I'd go out of my way to say things in a manner that couldn't be perceived as confrontational. Tagging statements with questions like, would you mind if I, or would it be possible to? And after years of living in America, I've learned to get straight to the point, my videos notwithstanding. Hello, yes, I'd like to order a delivery, please. I'd like a six inch on Italian bread, teriyaki chicken with American cheese toasted. Well, my, I mean, my wife gave me the number. I, is it? Right, okay, well, I'll, I'll let her know. Thank you, sorry about that, yep, bye. That was the Chicago Public Library. And it doesn't mean I've become rude or anything like that, because the Americans that I speak to in this manner speak to me in the same manner. And also, being direct doesn't mean you shouldn't use phrases like please, or thank you, or bless your little cotton socks. It just means getting straight to the point. No, that's fine. And then could I just add green peppers, onions, and tomatoes, and that's it. Tomatoes. 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 Yep. And while we're on the subject of placing orders, that brings us on directly to our final entry. To Americans, tipping might seem like an odd entry to have on a list of habits, but for me, it had to become a habit because growing up in Britain, you're not expected to tip the bar staff or the waiter. In America, because those workers rely on those tips for income, it is inconceivably rude not to tip. And how do I know that? Because I accidentally did that once. I was on a business trip in Westminster, Colorado, and I decided to stay up late one night and just have a couple of drinks at the bar. I struck up a conversation with the barman who had an interest in British culture, perhaps owing to the fact that Westminster, Colorado shares its name with Westminster, London, but that's not important right now. What's important is we stayed up for about two hours talking until I was the last customer in the bar. He went into the back to do whatever bar staff do in the back, and I took that as my cue to leave. And as I was on the flight back to Indianapolis the next day, it hit me. I never tipped him and I still feel really bad about that. So if you're watching Barman from the Doubletree in Westminster, Colorado, this video is dedicated to you. No, you've been great. So one last thing, when I put a tip on the receipt, does that go to the delivery person or does that go to you? Goes to the delivery person. So if, could I send you a check? You personally for say, you know, 20% of this, because, well, it's people, think that I'm some sort of YouTube sensation, right? It's not, not my words. And I don't want to be seen to lack generosity. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you've got to put back a little bit, you know, and I just feel it's the least I could do because you've been excellent. One habit that I'm really proud of is being thankful to my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond and support the work that I do, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next time we touch base, goodbye. Right, you, what's your address? I mean, I suppose it's public knowledge. If this went to you, would it be, would it be received in the form of a gift and therefore a complicated matter with your manager? You are the manager, that's perfect. <laughs>